Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look inside of Character Creator 4 and iClone 8, the new plugin Headshot 2, and how we can take a static mesh from any source, such as this Terminator model from Sketchfab, and turn it into a fully animatable 3D mesh in a very short amount of time. Now there's going to be two different versions of this video on Johnny How To, which is a full tutorial step by step. There will also be a version on as art, which is more of an overview video and not quite as detailed. So feel free to check out the links in the description and go to whatever video is more suited to you. This new plugin from Reillusion is of particular interest to me because I had done a video on Johnny How To a couple years ago talking about a program called Wrap, which does similar functionality, but is way more expensive and a lot more complex to use. Not to mention you have to do the whole import export process if you want to get it back into an animation program. The headshot takes all of the work out of this to where we can do everything under one program roof, which really expedites the workflow. So you can see there's two different workflows here. There is the image based workflow, which is the kind of legacy version from headshot one. And we also have the new and what we're going to focus on here today, the mesh transfer tool, which is going to take a static mesh and turn it into a fully rigged and animatable mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the file from an FBX and just drag this guy right in. And I'm going to bring it in as a prop initially. Then we're going to transfer it to a character in just a little bit. So it says this object contains 14 meshes. Would you like to break up the meshes in the sub props? In this case, I actually do want to do this because I don't want all the parts of this model. So I'm going to go and click on yes. And once it's done, I'm going to go and select the character and then press F to focus on this. So first off, I can see this guy's facing the wrong direction. That's probably one of the first things I'm going to want to address here. So I'm going to go and select this guy in the transform properties. I'll go and scroll down here a little bit. And for rotate on my Z axis, which uh, since icon is a Z up, I'm going to go ahead and rotate this 180 degrees. And now he's facing the right direction. I can kind of see when compared to the original model, the texture looks a little bit washed out, but that's a quick fix. All I'm really interested in is the head and maybe the glasses. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out what I need and what I don't. So here's the glasses and I'll go and double click this and just call this glasses. All these guys that I know I'm not going to use, I'm going to go ahead and just delete out of here and let's go ahead and fix the kind of washed out look of the texture on these that we need so i'm going to go and select the main arnold model i'm going to go over to the materials tab and really all that we need to do here is some very slight adjustments if i scroll down we can see that the strength of the base color is only at 80 percent if we go and put this to 100 percent, there we go now we're getting the full color from that and it's kind of funny, you can kind of see he has the built-in shading from the light on his actual texture. So even if I don't have any lighting in this scene, this is kind of baked on and painted the way the artist did to kind of look like there's a light coming from above here. Almost looks like face paint here. It's kind of funny because it almost looks along the lines of the way Arnold Schwarzenegger does in a scene in Conan the Barbarian where he has all this body paint on. And then also Daryl Hannah in the movie Blade Runner, which he's about to try and kill Harrison Ford's character. I'm going to go in and stick with this somewhat for our final model as far as texture, even though if I was really doing this, I'd probably want to fix these areas. So with that being the case, I'm going to go ahead and select our main Arnold model here. And with the headshot V2 select, I'm going to make sure I'm on mesh since I want to transfer this mesh to a fully animated rig version. I'm going to go ahead and say start head generation. Once this is loaded up, I can see that I have some points that I need to have corresponding on the other side. And since this is the interface I'm going to be using for a while here, I'm going to go ahead and just drag this over and give myself a little bit more room to work with. So I'm not going to need this for the time being. So we have a 24, a 32 and a 35 point layout. Probably what I think I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and do the 32 because I do want to have the ears. You can see this is only face points, face with ear points and then full head points. I do want to have the ears included in this. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure to use the 32. And I'm going to go ahead and add some extra points since this is kind of a caricature type version of Arnold. It's not really realistic proportions. I might need some extra points to have everything correspond. So that being the case, even though we only have the points on the left side, I'm going to go ahead and click on auto detection. And it's not going to do a perfect job, but all the main face points it's going to lay out for me. What I might want to do here is zoom in quite a bit. And you can see that the zooms are synced. And that's because sync camera is checked right here. I'm going to go and take a look at the model that we're actually going to be working with over here. And if I hold down alt and then left click and drag, I can pan around here. But I'm going to go ahead and use the drop down. And I'm going to say wireframe. And I can kind of see this is a pretty low polygon version of Arnold. And so we just want to kind of want to keep that in mind as we're working here. 
So I might do this on white so I can see how it's corresponding here. This really just goes to you have different views to kind of help you along your way. I'm going to go ahead and do vertex color just for a second so we can see this is not a super ultra detailed mesh. The textures are taking us the rest of the way. So the auto detection has done a pretty good job, but we're going to want to refine these points. And this is a pretty nice, simple drag and drop adjustment. And so you can see if I hover over the destination, it automatically highlights the source on the left side here. So I can see that at least on here, this is a little bit below the area that goes in the mouth here. So I'm gonna try and put these, at least based on the flow, around the same type of area. So I'm, and I'm gonna, might actually try and do this on actual vertices to get as close as I can. So I might do something like around here, and then I'll go ahead and do that on the other side. And you can kind of see these red lines we really wanna try and correspond to. We can see it's a little bit outside of that. And so if we say this is the inside, we maybe want to try and ride these lines right here. We do want to try and get these as close as possible because as you saw, we, we're going to be using the dynamic wrinkle system. And if we get these too far off, say on the forehead or parts of the mouth or things like that, like the corners of the eyes, then the wrinkles aren't going to correspond correctly. And we'll be able to see that along the way and make adjustments if needed, but it's just something to kind of keep in mind. Okay, perfect. So, so far, so good. We've got most of our points accounted for. We need to do the extras for the ears so i can see that we have 24 points overall so i need to pick up and manually place for the ears over here so i'm going to go ahead and rotate around here and get pretty close to an orthographic view from the side and i'll go ahead and try and take a look so it looks like 25 is at the base of the ear maybe around here so i'll go ahead and just click and you can see this is 25 actually move this guy over here this is supposed to be 27 And this guy is supposed to be 26. So I need to make sure to have the numbers corresponding correctly. All right, so I think we have all of our points. The main thing is we wanna make sure the alignment points match in quantity on both sides. And obviously the location of each of them we wanna match as much as possible. We can add some extra points to help identify these spots if we need to. But for now, let's go ahead and have this run as is and we'll go and take a look at the result. So I'm gonna go and click on head gen right here. And this is where it's gonna actually do its magic and do all the processing and the wrapping of the actual mesh itself. All right, so that's done. It didn't take very long, partially because this is a pretty low poly mesh. But if we go ahead and say effective error, what do you want to use? We can do face only. If we only wanted to transfer just the main face part of the model, we can do the overall head with the ears, face and ears. And then we have the entire head. I think I do want to keep the neck in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this as is. And one thing, since the proportions of the neck are a little bit exaggerated, it might help for me to go back and add some more points for the neck. Because if we go ahead and go back to the aligned points spot, you can kind of see that he has a much thicker neck than the character over here. And it might give us a better idea, or at least give the plug-in a better idea on how the neck should be formed if we give it a couple more points to work with. So if we go ahead and say, you know what? This is roughly at the base of the neck. This is roughly at the base of the neck around here. So maybe we try and say, here's this point and here's this point. And again, I might need to go back and forth a little bit to make sure this works okay. So I'll go and do head gen again. And let's go and take a look at this. So the head doesn't look too bad. Obviously there wasn't a head on the original model here. So it's gonna look weird texture wise, but I think that's working fine. Again, we can take a look at just the face, the face and the ears or the entire entirety of the neck and the neck looks like it's keeping its thickness this time around which I think I do want so that little extra step I think is quite worth it so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to go ahead and refine mesh and this is where we can try and get it more closer to the cc4 base mesh or our character to get the overall best result that we're trying to get after so we can see the topology I think this is mostly working pretty well in some cases, we might want this to be up here a little bit more or this down here a little bit more. There is a reference sheet you would want to be looking at when we're actually doing this you know, really, really in depth. But I think this is looking like a good start for us. So in this case, I don't think this is that bad. I might double check and see if these lips are working correctly as we're going through. I might go to move really quick and uh, I might nudge these up a little bit just to try and get the outer lip up in these areas. I might do this over here as well. 
There we go. I think this works pretty good for the lower lips. And since I had a little bit of that sphere, that radius of influence, it moved the other corresponding points in that general area as well. And you know what? At least for a starting point, this looks pretty darn good. Uh, I can't see the lips perfectly here because his lips completely were touching here. So I don't see that red line, which may or may not become an issue. I might need to go back and adjust that. But I can see on the eyes, I see that red line along the edges pretty well, the way that I think I want to on both sides. And so it looks like at least from a starting point, we're moving pretty well. I do want to keep the neck shape since he has this kind of thick neck we want to have transferred over as well. And let's go ahead and start to transfer this over and see what it looks like on, attached to a body. So I'm going to keep neck shape. I don't really need to keep head size because it might need to be sized up or down based on the body. But we're going to attach the body and see how this looks for us. Going to do a male and no mask. We're going to use the entire head. And we're going to go ahead and do the diffuse texture from the base model. So it's going to have this shading built into it. But we can maybe adjust that in Photoshop a little bit later on. If we had a high poly mesh that we wanted to take that from, we could specify this here. We could project it from an image or just not have a diffuse texture at all. Click on generate. We'll let it do its thing. So now this is done. Let's go ahead and zoom out. We have the original prop import down here still and go and pan up here and we see our model on the body. So of course it doesn't know that the skin's not supposed to be white. So it's going to try and apply that to blend in with the skin tones as best as it can. And that actually doesn't look too bad. His neck looks a little bit at a funky angle and, and quite a bit big here, but that does kind of go along with the original model. So I'll go and leave this for now, but realistically I might go back and adjust. It looks like kind of has giraffe neck here right now, which we probably don't want. But let's go ahead and see how this works and an animated set right now. So in the bottom here, it's a little bit hard to see. So I'll go ahead and drag this over. And it goes off screen from the capture. But when I click on motion, if I go down, there is a wrinkle check category. And then I'm going to do dramatic mail. And that just gives me some acting to take a look and see how this is working as far as the texture. And then the actual rigging from the base model that we had here. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. And I'll go ahead and play this. And man, with hardly any effort on our part, aside from designating some points, to where it can actually animate and look pretty darn cool. So we can see the lips have some funk going on on the inside and also with the nostrils here. But overall, this looks pretty darn good for how little effort we've put in this so far. Just to make this look a little bit better, and because it's one of my favorite new features in iClone, I'm going to go ahead and go to the wrinkle tab right here for expression wrinkles. I'm going to go ahead and activate expression wrinkles. This is going to use the built-in default version of the wrinkles. If you have the wrinkle essentials pack, you can use some more specified wrinkle sets. But this is going to look pretty darn good from the get-go for us, I think. So if I, now if you go ahead and go through, you can see this is making a pretty great difference on the head and everything like that. So all these wrinkles and things like that, we can toggle on and off. You can see it's making a pretty darn big difference in the quality of what we're getting here. All right, so let's go ahead and try and adjust and fix some of these areas like the lips and so on and so forth. So in the headshot section, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. We can go and adjust the eye color. I think that's probably pretty good for his eye color for now. And for the fixes, I can see the mouth and nostril mask, which is actually what we want to fix here. I'm going to go ahead and do mouth and nostril plus, and that's going to try and fix the textures in some of these areas. So I'm going to go ahead and update the skin texture after I select that. And we can see this is not perfect, but it has improved quite a bit. So if I go ahead and rotate this down a little bit, you can see the nostrils don't have white on the inside anymore. And a lot of the lip white is gone as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get Arnold some hair here. And then maybe we'll bring back in his glasses if we just wanted to see the mouth animate as well. So let's go ahead and do that by scrolling down here. Or not scrolling, but panning down here and selecting our original guy right here. And with them selected in the scene here, we see we have a couple different things. First off, we have his hair and we have his glasses. So let's start off with the hair just because I think that's going to make a pretty big visual difference. We're going to go ahead and go to the content tab, hair tab right here first and save it. So we save it under the right spot. And I'll just call this Arnie hair and click OK. And we can see under props, we have Arnie hair. So I'm going to go ahead and double click this guy to add it into our project and if i go ahead and press w to move this up a little bit i can see it's facing the wrong way again so i'm going to go ahead and go to the 
transform adjustments and rotate this guy 180 degrees like we did last time. And then we're going to go ahead and move this guy up. Now it's not looking too shabby. It's not looking absolutely perfect, but I think this is looking good enough for us to get an idea of this here. But right now, if he was animating around, walking around the scene or his neck was, you know, tilting to the right or left, I don't think this would move along with that. So what we need to do is with this guy selected in the scene, so we have our hair right here, we need to go ahead and scroll down here and say pick parent. So for this hair, I'm going to go and pick parent. I'm going to say follow his head. And now we can see CC base head is the parent and it's going to be attached to that as it's moving along. So I think that should get us to where the ha the hair is going to move along with our model. So cool. So far, so good. Let's go and continue on and maybe get our glasses in here to position them mostly in front of the eyes here. So we'll go ahead and pull this forward. Make space. Ah, and it looks like our glasses don't have the sides. That was probably a different part of the mesh, but just for an example on how we can use this, I think this should work fine. So we'll go ahead and move this back just a little bit. Down. Here we go. We need to attach this like we did last time with the hair. So we'll go ahead and pick parent and we'll go ahead and make sure to choose the head. And now if we go ahead and play this, we have our Terminator wearing his glasses while also doing his acting. And you can almost hear Arnold Schwarzenegger doing his yeah type thing there. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> All right, we have a completely animatable head character with dynamic wrinkles with a very minimal amount of effort on our part. All right, everyone, I hope you had a good time with this tutorial. I hope you can kind of see the power in this headshot program, especially when you consider how expensive programs like Wrap are versus the Headshot 2 plugin, and how in this case, we don't even have to jump in and out of Character Creator in order to get the final results that we want.